everyone. My next guest, Carrie, has been struggling with her son, Cole. Four months ago, she called the police on her own son and having him arrested. Let's find out why. Please, everyone, help me welcome Carrie to the show. Hi, Carrie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good, thank, thank you. you. Great for being here. Hi. All right, so Carrie, tell me what is going on while you have to call the police on your own son? Oh my God, I was terrified for his life. Yeah. Like, and I didn't, I didn't know what else to do. He had been up for days doing whatever it was he was doing and the only thing I could, and he was just getting worse, like getting more manic and more just out of control. And I'm like, whatever's in him, he's got to get it out of his system. So what was he doing? You mean drug-wise? Yeah, or and also behavior-wise. Behavior-wise, he was, um, first of all, just not sleeping mm. and getting more mean. And you owe me money. You have two hours to give me this money, or else I'm punching you in the face. And oh, and um, and he's the sweetest, sweetest kid. Yeah. I've been told he's done meth. He's done coke. Wow. He's on weed. So how did you actually find out that he was doing drugs? Or using um, drugs? The first, other than smoking weed, which I don't agree with, but it's more acceptable now than smoking cigarettes, mm -hmm. um, was he was living with a girl at my house, and my dog came in to my room in the middle of the night, woke me up, like making these noises that I've never heard before. I'm the last house on a dead end. I go up to let my dog out, thinking he just had to pee. My street is filled with ambulances, fire trucks, police. Here, my son had overdosed, and no one, no one thought to come and get me to wake me up. Instead, they cleaned up all evidence of the party and then called 911. Oh my gosh. That was the first time I realized that it wasn't just weed. I, I know that feeling of finding out that, you know, that it's hard, hard on you as a mother. How did it feel when he was locked up? kind of a relief mm -hmm. because I knew that he was getting clean. I knew that he was, but I mean, but that's not the answer for him. You know, he, I just, I didn't know what else to do. Yeah, he in that moment, to, that's the best you could do. He had to get that out of his system, literally yeah. out of his system. So my producers told me that you blame Cole's girlfriends for what's going on. None of them are upstanding, good people. They are all lazy, um, unmotivated, more interested in getting their fingernails done and dyeing their hair than going to work. His one has two kids and now a third one that could possibly be my son, you know? And So do you think these women, his past girlfriends, all of his girlfriends are encouraging him to do the drugs? They're not encouraging him to be a better person. They're not encouraging him to work as hard as he can, mm -hmm. you know? the his last girlfriend was on the phone with him the whole time he was on at work you know they would she would be you know in the background on a phone rather, while he was at work mm. hang up the phone let him do his job yeah so why don't you trust cole cole has stolen from me so many times thousands and thousands of dollars um I don't, even, I don't even lock my house anymore. And they're like, why? I'm like, everything's stolen. You know, my thief lives in my house. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've bought a safe for my, my money and he's broken my safe. And oh. I sleep with my purse. And I don't... Did y'all hear that? A mother said she has to sleep with her purse. I can't imagine being in my own house and feeling like I gotta keep my wallet next to me. I gotta sleep with my purse. What does that do to your mental state? I'm... My son is the greatest person in the world. I love my son. He is amazing. And he doesn't, I don't understand why he does this. I don't. Why do you make excuses for him when I ask you how you're feeling? Because I, I don't know. He's, he's the greatest thing in my life. He really is. And he's my one accomplishment, you know? Mm. And God doesn't make trash. <laughs> you know, mm, I didn't right. make trash. Yeah. And he just needs help. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you two things, first of all, is that the first of all is your son is, I'm sure he's a great man, I can't wait to meet him, but he's not just your greatest accomplishment. 
You are a strong woman who has probably done so many amazing things in your life, but I don't want you to ever think that that's your greatest accomplishment. <laughs> it, it, because part of that guilt and part of hearing that plays on your self-esteem. You're a strong person. You, you have done amazing things. And I can, only, I can tell you that just from hearing how you stepped up to try to do what you thought was best for your, your mm -hmm. son. But I want to now talk to Cole and get his side of this story and hear from him. So everyone, please help me welcome Carrie's son to the show, Cole. What's going on, man? Good to meet you. Take a seat. Um, so what do you need your mom to understand about you? That I'm changing my life and that I'm not the person I was before. Okay. That it's time for me to grow, grow up. Yeah. So who are you now? I'm a whole different Cole. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm doing way better than I was before in life. Mm -hmm. I'm steady working, getting motivated with that, trying to get more involved. I want you to talk to your mom. Tell your mom that you're a different Cole. Because for some reason, she doesn't know if she can trust this. I feel like she never been able to trust me. And Why is that? Well, because I have messed up in the past, but the past is the past. It's time to move on. Did you have a good relationship with your mom growing up? No. What was your relationship like growing up? I mean, she was supportive, but the arguments always happen. I don't know. We always, I always fight about her with like taking pills and stuff. This is even before drugs. Yeah. Before drugs, what was your relationship like? Not good. Really? Yeah. It wasn't good. No. Why? I just feel like we can't ever communicate with each other without like arguing, and like supporting each other. I think I'm there for. I have one of the only people in this world that has your back. never said you You've always been there for me, but. We need to work on the communication. Talk better. So, so even before you were doing drugs, you think the communication wasn't good? Yes. What did you feel when you were talking to your mother prior to doing drugs? That it's always a subject change with her. What like does that mean? Something she doesn't want to hear or talk about. So yell and pick something else to talk about or yell about. OK. And I'm like, I wasn't even done finishing this conversation. It's time to see what's different, what's new, because I have actions to show. OK, what about your new girlfriend? Well, um, you're not going to talk about her. I, I, because okay. your mom thinks your girlfriends, girlfriends, all of them play a part into who you are, who you become, the addiction issues. Do you think your girlfriends or the choice in women you have play into your addiction? My past exes, yes, but not my current one, Shannon. She, she just... is like the best thing in my life right now. And... Okay, Can't... hold on. Shannon just recently became Cole's girlfriend. Shannon is two and a half weeks out of heroin addiction. Oh. Shannon is, uh, was supposed to be in rehab. Shannon was dropped off at my house by Cole's friend who is on meth. Didn't know he was on meth, is on meth and was so, tweaking. Cole, I want to hear this from you. So your mother's yeah. saying that you the women you date and the people you're around, even to this day, still are dealing with addiction. That there's people that have heroin addictions. You're getting dropped off by someone who has a meth addiction currently. Do you think that's healthy yeah. for you to be around? Well, she was dropped off. I wasn't. She but was left in my house. if a meth head doesn't want this girl, why do you? If a meth head doesn't want this girl, why do you? How long have you exactly been sober, Cole? Almost a month. You've been a month sober. So my producer said you say she always yells? Yeah. OK. Am I yelling out of fear or out of anger? Or am I terrified that my son is going to become another statistic and be dead in my garage? I'm not going to be another junkie in your garage. You didn't have the ability to say no to meth. So? When did you start using drugs? When did you start using drugs? It, like, I recently started using meth three months ago. That was just like experimenting and stuff. Didn't like it, so I just quit. OK, and what tried were you using before months. then? Tried it for three months. You tried it for three months. What were you using before then? Xanax. Got it. How old were you when you tried your drugs for the first time? 11. You were 11. And where did you get drugs from? My neighbors. Your neighbors. 
11? And that, and that was weed, or what was that? Xanax. Xanax. Who gave you Xanax? That's confidential. Okay, so, so the only reason I'm asking that is because, because I was trying to get a, a pinpoint of your relationship beforehand and where maybe the trust issues could have started. But if you, if you tried Xanax 11, that means since 11 you've been in an altered state. So there's no baseline of what a good relationship or good communication is. Yeah, really. Because you were always in a cloud of some sense. When you I turned like it, right? 18, I started like realizing like I haven't remembered like any months or nothing like that. But I got a good like memory still of like some stuff, but yeah. Do you value your life? I do. You do? I think he values himself. Do you yes, value yourself? No yeah. idea how amazing he is. Well, mom, this is do. the end of the day, mom. I, again, this is one of the things about addiction and rehab is that the person who is addicted has to make the commitment. When I sent my son to rehab, I didn't force him. I said to him, either you have to make the commitment to go or I have to take a step back and not be in your life. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the sort of the boundaries you have to set with someone's an addiction. You're not setting any boundaries, mom. And I, and I love you and I appreciate you for wanting to be there for your son. But until you set boundaries with him and stick to those boundaries, your son is going to be in this cycle. The reason that he feels, and I, I know you're getting help for enabling, the reason he feels like he can do this and that he can be callous about this and talk about this this way is because he knows mom is going to always be there to enable him. He knows mom is going to always be there to, to support him. Mom is always going to be there. And he's already heard the stories about his girlfriends. This is one of the things that we learn about. It's just parents, period, but especially parents of kids who are of addiction. They've already heard us say the same things over and over again that at some point he's tuned you out. And so he's tuned you out. He's nodding his head. He's tuned you out. <laughs> So you're, you're going through here stressing your life, saying, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, I want this, I want that. Please do better. Please pick this different girl. He's telling you he's not listening. So if someone's not listening, why are you still talking about it? Because I care. I don't know. But you know what is even more showing them that you care? It's saying, I'm going to care from a distance. You have to start saying to yourself, I love you, but I have to love you from this boundary. And I actually do think that it's going to help you. And the funny part is that as I'm saying this, y'all noticing, he's nodding his head. Well, go. I mean, if she's amazing, go live with her. It's not about her. Yeah. It's not about her. It's about him. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to tell you this is that as you're talking to him about his addiction, you can no longer bring up any of the girls. Because okay. it's not, it doesn't matter if he's with a girl that's on drugs, a girl that's sober. It's a personal choice that he has to make. And unfortunately, he doesn't want to make that choice yet. Any choice he makes is his own choice. It's nothing to do with you. But it's time for you to start making the choice to choose yourself now. I'm trying. I really am. Once you set these boundaries, the only thing you ever need to say to him is, we can talk when you're ready to get help. That is the clearest thing you can say. I said it to my own son. I said, I'm giving you a choice right now, and if you don't want to take this choice, then we will talk when you're ready to get help. But if you keep going through the motions, nothing's changed, sister. So right now, you need to turn to your son and say, son, we can keep talking. We can keep talking. When? When you're ready to get help. Thank you. Hold on, where are you going? I'll tell you where you're going, right here to subscribe, and right here to watch more, period.